They had worked together at Proctor Silex and decided to go off in the classic two guys in a garage, literally, building special machinery for people. Uh, the original partnership agreement, handwritten, single sheet, eight and a half by 11 paper, you know, it's uh, evidence of another era. Um, and the company started making special machinery for anybody who walked through the door. Initial equipment included machines for putting string handles on paper bags and I don't know if they, even they're still in existence. It was a company called the Metal Edge Box Company, and they made Metal Edge Boxes and all kinds of odds and ends. Um, and along the way, they came across, or rather, um, Bell Labs came across them, and Bell Labs was in the process of trying to build the first commercial transistors, and they needed all kinds of special fixtures. And Allentown was just up the road from... Philadelphia, and they'd come down and say, hey, Fred, now, can you make me a thing to do this, or can you make me a thing to do that? Um, and then, so they'd build it for them, and that was nice, and then they'd go on to the next project. But then Bell Labs started to license transistor technology to companies that would also build transistors, and on their way back from Allentown, they'd stop in Philadelphia and said, hey, we saw you had this and this and this at Allentown. We'd like one, too. So the company backed into what became the first commercially available semiconductor production gear. And the company had a, an incredibly broad product line at one point in time. You know, clean room gear, wet gear, you know, acid dip stuff when it was all very crude, photolithographic equipment. We built the first lightweight diffusion furnaces. Up until then, diffusion furnaces were built with fire brick. I mean, that was back when they were half-inch diameter wafers. Um, and assembly equipment. 